surrounding us on this beautiful campus are the laboratories for some of the most brilliant minds, not only in Brisbane, but around the world. These minds are hard at work solving some of the biggest challenges we face as a society. An aging population, the urgency for renewable energies, the impact of climate change, a shortage of food and water, and the need for improved security and defense. And then there's me, an astrophysicist whose focus is on distant planets, comets, nebulae, galaxies, and yes, even black holes. Aren't these pictures absolutely stunning? Look, astronomy always invokes a sense of awe and wonder, and while pictures like these are a powerful antidote to the anxiety and stresses of modern day living, in a world faced with so many pressing issues, how can society afford astronomy? How can it afford to fund astronomical research? One of the strongest arguments in support of astronomical research is that without it, many of the scientific discoveries and technological innovations of the last century simply wouldn't have been possible. I'm talking about things such as personal computers, fast wireless technology, communication satellites, solar panels, mobile phones, and medical imaging. These are just a few examples of the tangible gains that have spun off from astronomical research. But astronomy's contributions span back even further. Every culture, past and present, has a history rooted in astronomy. 80,000 years ago, the ancestors of the Australian Aboriginal people, widely believed to be the world's first astronomers, they performed observations of the sun, the moon, and the stars to inform them of navigation, to provide them with a calendar of when to hunt for food. In the 1700s, Captain James Cook's first maiden voyage to the great southern land of Australia it was actually funded by the Royal Society as a scientific expedition to perform astronomical observations. Back in the present though, we're experiencing a shift in research priority, one that sees astronomy and other forms of fundamental research taking a backseat to applied research, which is a type of research that aims to rapidly churn out commercially viable products and technologies with more immediate societal benefit. Indeed, the Australian government even supports this, and in a recent report stated that appropriate levels of public funding, that's your funding, is allocated to research that addresses the most immediate problems facing the nation. The most immediate problems facing the nation. While astronomy's long-term contributions to science, technology, and our very way of living is frankly undeniable, where does such a shift in research priority leave astronomy today? Again, I pose the question, how can society afford astronomy? How can it afford to fund astronomical research? Let's consider for a moment the Australian Space Agency, which was established in July of last year at a cost of $70 million by the Australian government, who just weeks ago announced a partnership with NASA at a cost of $30 million per year for the next five years. All up, that's $100 million of public funding, your funding, going to space-based research at the Australian Space Agency. Let's use that figure and do a little bit of math. And I'll keep it simple for you. I'm going to assign this little bag of money to be equal to $100 million. And I do that because I assume that's how the government stores money in bags with dollar signs printed on the front. <laughs> now, we already know the Australian Space Agency is going to cost the Australian public one little bag of money. But did you know over the same period of a year that Australians will also spend 150 little bags of money on cigarettes as well? And when you take in to account the associated costs of smoking to healthcare and to bushfire control, well, I start to run out of room to display little bags of money. Okay, I appreciate that smoking is a choice, and to some degree, you don't get a choice on where your tax dollars go. So let's drill down in onto that one little bag of money and determine what the true cost is of the Australian Space Agency to the average Australian taxpayer. Over the next financial year, total government spending is expected to top $500 billion to, there's not enough space for little bags. <laughs> but that one little bag, that equates to just 0.02% of total government spending. Or to make it a little bit easier for you, that represents to the average Australian taxpayer in one year, just $4. Now, each of those $4 is going to provide Australia with advanced environmental monitoring, aircraft engineering, human space exploration, robotic probes. It's going to provide new jobs, new technologies, more investment in business. Hey, this is stuff that helps the economy grow. As an astrophysicist, this funding also enables my work. 
And as I said before, it's a work that invokes a sense of awe and wonder. And it's here, quite possibly, where astronomy provides its greatest benefit to society. For you see, it's re research in astronomy, it derives its support from the innate curiosity of humans to explore the universe. It attempts to tackle some of the most largest and profound questions that we ask ourselves. Was the Big Bang really the beginning? Are we alone in the universe? Is the universe even real? And if it is real, what's its ultimate fate? It's questions such as these that inspires people of all ages to pursue scientific endeavors. The late English cosmologist Stephen Hawking once said that we step on the shoulders of science, building on the work that has come before us, aiming to inspire a new generation of young scientists to continue once we are gone. Stephen once said that he was proud to have played such a small role in such a profound idea. And if you know who Stephen Hawking is, then that's direct proof of that. From my perspective, even if my research, even if my research fails to deliver on some groundbreaking spin-off technology decades from now, even if it's difficult to measure the direct impact to society at this point in time, I still take pride in sharing my knowledge with others. I still take pride in inspiring a new generation of young scientists. I know that not all students of astronomy will go on and make a career out of astronomy. But the great news is, as they learn about all the wonders of the universe, as they try to answer those most profound questions, they will gain a unique set of skills, a unique set of transferable skills that will allow them to apply their knowledge to so many other fields of science. It will allow them to apply their knowledge to some of the most pressing issues facing society. The urgency for renewable energies, a shortage of food and water, the impact of climate change. And when you consider all of this, that is how you, that is how we, that is how society can afford astronomy. And it's why we have to be able to afford astronomical research.